One of the most popular arguments for Islam is the argument from rapid growth. Muslims often claim that Islam must be true because it's the fastest growing religion in the world. Arguments based on popularity are quite strange since different religions and ideologies can be popular at different times and in different ways. Christianity is the world's largest religion, but no Muslim accepts this as proof that Christianity is true. Communism was one of the fastest spreading movements in history, but what does this have to do with the truth of communism? Muslims should only appeal to Islam's rapid growth as evidence for Islam if the reasons for Islam's rapid growth have something to do with Islam being true. So the question we should be asking is, why is Islam spreading rapidly? The primary reason Islam is growing so rapidly is high birth rates. As a general rule, if your group has more children than other groups, your group's going to grow faster than other groups. According to Pew Research, Muslims have the highest birth rates in the world. The question we should ask now is, why do Muslims have more children than non-Muslims? Here we find that the high birth rates are connected to Islam's impact on women. When women have fewer opportunities in life, they tend to start having children at a younger age. Fewer girls go to school, fewer go to college, there aren't many careers available to them, their parents marry them off at a younger age, instead of starting a family in their 20s, they start a family in their early teens, and birth rates go up. So Muslims are simply having more babies than non-Muslims, and this is because Islam radically reduces opportunities for women. But there's more to the story. Pew Research notes that apostasy, leaving one's religion, isn't as common among Muslims as it is among non-Muslims. Why are Muslims less inclined than other groups to leave their religion? The answer has to do with the kinds of psychological pressures Islam places on Muslims throughout their lives. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6922, Muhammad commands his followers, whoever changed his Islamic religion, kill him. In many Muslim countries, people who leave Islam face death, imprisonment, or at the very least, persecution. Even in the West, where apostates are protected by law, Muslims often understand that if they leave Islam, they'll be shunned by their families. Islam also discourages critical thinking about Muhammad. In Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran, Allah declares, but know by your Lord, they can have no faith until they make you, O Muhammad, judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. If you find in yourself any resistance against Muhammad's decisions, the Quran says you're not a real Muslim. Verses like this have led to generations of Muslims who are terrified of questioning anything Muhammad said. And the result of the suppression of critical thought is that many Muslims regard any argument for Islam, even an argument like, Islam is growing fast, so it must be true, as entirely convincing. Apart from this, Muslims are generally more sheltered from criticism than non-Muslims are. In Muslim countries, criticism of Islam is not tolerated and may be met with legal punishments or mob violence. Even in Western nations, criticism of Islam is often silenced by calling critics racists, bigots, hate mongers, and Islamophobes. Muhammad ordered his followers to kill people who made fun of him, and the Salman Rushdie affair, and the murder of Theo Van Gogh, and the Charlie Hebdo massacre have convinced most critics to keep their mouths shut, thus further insulating Muslims from any sort of critical thinking about their religion. So now we understand why the Muslim population is growing so rapidly. But Islam isn't just growing rapidly in terms of global population, it's also growing rapidly in the West. Here again, however, this has little to do with conversions to Islam. Islam's main source of growth in the West is immigration. Why are so many Muslims fleeing Muslim countries and moving to the West? Sadly, Allah's commands to wage jihad against hypocrites and Muhammad's commands to kill apostates have led to endless instability in Muslim lands. There's always some group accusing other groups of being hypocrites or apostates and wanting to kill them for it. People who just want to live peaceful lives and provide a good future for their children decide to leave. And where do they go? They move to America or Europe. Putting all of this together, why is Islam growing globally? It's growing because of high birth rates combined with psychological conditioning. Why is Islam growing in the West? It's growing in the West because Islam tends to produce unstable countries that many people don't want to live in. If our Muslim friends think that Islam's oppression of women and inability to produce stable countries is proof that Islam is true, we may not be able to change their minds. All we can do is point out that many of us would look at the exact same evidence 
and come to the opposite conclusion.